Let's go on now to uh, rationalizing binomial denominators. So what we want to do now is once again, uh, we want to get rid of the radical in, in the denominator. However, it's not just the radical by itself. It's now going to be attached with, with another term. So since it's two terms, we call those binomials. So we want to rationalize binomial denominators. Okay. All right. And so the notion that we're going to do here is, uh, is a peculiar one. And we're going to multiply by, by conjugates. Okay, and let me just tell you what, what a conjugate is. A conjugate, okay, so say if the denominator, I'm just going to use just uh, two variables here. Say if it's x plus y. Okay, let's just say if, if, if that's our denominator. Okay, if I said multiply by its conjugate, it's very, very, very simple. The, the conjugate is just the same exact letters or numbers, whatever it is, you just change the sign on, um, in the middle. So it's going to be x minus y. So this guy right here would be the conjugate right here. Okay. So, and you say, well, what's the purpose of that? Well, what happens um, is the, the radical is going to disappear. And let's just multiply this out right now doing, um, uh, doing our foil because I want to show you a cool pattern here and that you'll be able to start to use the pattern and you'll go just a, a tad bit more quicker when you're doing your calculations. So if I were to do the FOIL method, um, x times x is x squared, and then x times negative y is a negative xy. First, outside, inside, so then y times x is a plus xy. Or you can say yx, right? When you multiply, you can switch them around. I just want to be consistent right here. And then L last, and then y times y is a minus y squared. Check out what happens here. I have a negative xy and a positive xy. So those middle terms cancel out. And look at what we have left. We have x squared minus y squared. Okay, so notice this. If I do x plus y times x minus y, you just take your first term x and you square it. And you do minus, you take your second term y and you square it. This is actually very, very helpful here because when we multiply by the conjugates right now, really all we're going to do is we're, gonna, we're just going to take the first term and square it and then take the second term and square it. So I'm going to write that here in the corner. I'm just going to say x plus y times x minus y is equal to x squared minus y squared. Okay, and um, you learned in your factoring section that this is called difference of squares. Difference of two squares right here, right? So uh, maybe, uh, you know, that should look a little bit uh, familiar, okay? So watch how we're going to use this right now, all right? Okay, so I want to get rid of my... Uh, uh, the radical. And the way that we do that is we're going to multiply by its conjugate. So I'm going to multiply the bottom by 2 plus radical 3. I'm going to multiply the top by 2 plus radical 3. Make sure that you understand that we're not changing the problem. Because if I multiply the top and the bottom by the same number, well, I can cross out those same things and now we're back at the same problem. Okay, so really we're just multiplying by 1. All right? So the top is just going to become 4 times this, which is actually just doing the distributive property. So 4 times 2 is 8. And then 4 times radical 3 is just 4 radical 3. Okay, we don't multiply the 4 inside the radical. Okay, we don't do that. Now watch this now. See, see how this is kind of like our x minus y and then x plus y. See how that looks just like this? It's the same x term as 2 and the same y term as 3, one's a minus, one's a plus. Okay, so it looks just like this. So the way that you multiply this out is you just take the first term and you square it, you take the second term and you square it, and then you put a minus sign. Okay, I just, I just wanted to show you this so that you're not, you don't have to do FOIL every single time. We're going to get the same answer, but the quicker way of doing it is by using this little cool shortcut that we kind of derived together. All right, so if I'm going to multiply 2 minus radical 3 times 2 plus radical 3, I just square the first term. So square the first term, 2 squared, minus, 
and then I square this term. So that's radical 3 squared. All right. So I'm going to leave the numerator as 8 plus 4 radical 3. So 2 squared is 4 minus uh, radical 3 squared. Again, squaring and a square root are opposite operations. So that 2 crosses out with that radical. So I'm left with just 3. And that just nicely becomes 8 plus 4 radical 3 all over 1. Or you could just ignore the 1, right, because uh, it's the same thing. And we just rationalized. And we know that we rationalized because the denominator no longer has bing, a radical. And that's the whole purpose of rationalizing is to eliminate the radical. All right, let's go on to part B now. And... Uh, Let's see what's going on over here. So again, we want to get rid of the radical, so we're going to multiply by its conjugates. So I'm going to multiply by radical 2 minus radical 13. And I have to do the same thing to the top here. Radical 2 minus radical 13. All right? So let's see here. The top, um, you know what, in this case, uh, watch this here. I, I, I'm actually not going to multiply the 7 through. I'm just going to leave it as 7 times radical 2 minus radical 13. And you'll see here in a minute why. Okay. Um, all right. So let's leave that there. But the denominator now becomes, right, we just square the first term and square the second term and then put a minus sign. So square the, the first term. If I square, If I square a radical 2, isn't that just 2? Right? Because uh, the 2 crosses out with, the square crosses out with the radical. And then if I square radical 13, well, that's just going to be 13. Okay? So now that becomes 7 over radical 2 minus radical 13. And that's all over 2 minus 13, negative 11. All right, well, the, the reason why that I wanted to leave the 7 out here is, is for the following reason. If this right here, if this number was a 7, 14, 21, 28, meaning if it was a multiple of 7, then we would need to simplify this fraction even, even further. So that means you, you, know, you would have crossed out the 7 and then uh, reduced it by whatever the denominator was. So in this case, I thought it was by just looking at it, but I was wrong. This is not going to simplify. So you can multiply this through. Okay, and say that's, oh, that's 7 radical 2 minus 7 radical 13 all over negative 11. If you're like, oh, well, which one is the correct answer? They're both correct. Okay, uh, both answers are correct. This is the factored form, which is probably more appropriate, like I would say. You probably want to leave your answer like this where your term is factored out rather than this way. But they're both correct, though. Um, but if you want to, like, well, which one do you really probably want to have, I'd probably say the first one where it's factored out, okay? All right, and uh, oh, we don't need that there. Let's go on now to have more examples. Yeah, I have a C and D, more fun. All right, more nerdiness. Let's uh, try part C now. All right, so again, we want to get rid of the radicals in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply by its conjugates. So that's going to be radical 2 plus radical 7 radical 2 plus radical 7. All right, so let's do the numerator first. Okay, now the numerator now, uh, let's see, we have a binomial times a binomial. Uh, there's no cool shortcut here. We have to do the FOIL method. All right, so we're going to FOIL this guy right now, and uh, no way around that. All right, let's draw my numerator. or my. It's kind of crooked. Oh, well. So let's do first. Right, so, so, so right now we're doing FOIL. Radical 3 times radical 2 is radical 6, right? If they have the same index, then you keep the index and you just multiply what's, what's inside the radical, okay? First outside, so let's see, radical 3 times radical 7, let's say plus radical 21. And then we have to do first outside inside, so that's a plus radical 10. 5 times 2, and then radical 5 times radical uh, 7, that's a radical 35, okay? 
Now, the denominator, let's look at what's going on down here. Again, it's a, it's a conjugate, so the shortcut is you just square the first term. So that's just 2, right? If I square square root, squares cancel. And I square the denominator. So if I square radical 7, that's just 7. So let's just do one last line here. Okay. Now, can I combine radical 6 and radical 21 and radical 10 and radical 35? Can I add those together? No! You can't, right? The radicals... The, the only time that you can combine them together is if they have and they have to have the same index and the same radicand. And they have, okay, they all have the same um, index, but they don't have the same radicand. They're all different. So you just leave it like that. Radical 6 plus radical 21 plus radical 10 plus radical 35. But we can simplify that to be negative 5, and that will be it for that. Okay? All right. And last but not least, part D. Let's get rid of the of the um, radical. So I'm going to multiply by its conjugate. So that's radical K minus radical Z. Radical K minus radical Z. Uh, that's a Z right there. Eek. All right. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave that as 2 times radical K minus radical Z all over again so since we're multiplying conjugates we just take the first term and square it so if I square this I just get K and if I square this I just get Z and that's about as much as that guy can go right there